Next up, we're uh, going to have a uh, company, 21C Metals. So uh, in this bear market, there have not been very many exciting places to be, but one exception to that uh, is a little known metal called Palladium, which has been in a raging bull market. There's very few projects that you can find pure play Palladium. And uh, Wayne Tisdale, who is a uh, very successful entrepreneur in the mining space, is behind this company. He just raised a significant amount of capital, and uh, it's just getting going. So Wayne's going to tell us all about 21C Metals. Welcome, Wayne. Good morning. Uh, that was a great talk. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Um, 21C. I, I want to tell you a little story. First off, I'd like to tell, thank Paul Matissic, because it was a year ago um, about this time that his company bought us out of U.S. Cobalt, and it was a very significant purchase, and it gave me the idea that maybe we should go back into this market. I didn't realize how dramatic it would uh, change over the one year, how far Cobalt would go down on the uh, pricing scale. So it gave us a little bit of a challenge. <clears throat> I also want to tell you how I got started in the mining business because it's a, the silliest story in the world and yet it's quite, kind of cute. I was, a, I was a Saskatchewan farm boy and what you did when you were in Saskatchewan in the wintertime you became a diamond driller. So you go up north and you drill and I thought that was a little cold and a little hard and fortunately somebody dropped a barrel of mulsicut oil off on my leg and broke it. So there I was sitting in, on the farm and I decided to take my old truck and drive out to Ashcroft, BC where the Highland Valley was exploding. And I went there and I started working for a company called McElhaney on the survey crew and, and uh, some guy that I played hockey, it was a goaltender, quite popular in those days. And I, um, he said, there's a big strike at uh, Canloops. It's called Afton Mines. I said, really? He said, you should stake some claims. I didn't have a clue how to stake claims. So what I did is I went, took the instrument from McElhaney, got somebody with me and I drove a line straight north and south off the side and I tied it in perfectly. A year and a half later, I had staked seven fractions across the tech corporation. I took, took it to Vancouver and sold it to a mining promoter by the name of Ralph Rooney. And there I stood at 20 years old making $300,000. And I thought the mining business was just pure easy. I learned, it took me a long time to get off that one. So I, I, uh, I kept in it and uh, I've had an exceptionally good run. I, I've uh, had, had lots of fun and lots of opportunity. And one of the things I loved about before they went in to put, do paper staking in the in all across Canada is the, the good old days of getting out in the bush and cutting a claim post and the fights in the bar and all the stuff that we got up to when we were overstaking each other. I thought it was a magical time in my life. So I think, you know, the time that I had got into this mining business was the best, I think. So anyhow, let's talk about uh, 21 metals. We, uh, we got a combination of co cobalt and um, Palladium. It was my good friend Michelle that put the na name together, uh, medals for today and tomorrow. And uh, I'll just clip through there. Everybody here, I'm sure, is totally aware of the of the uh, evolution of the electrified vehicle, that, what's going on, it, and how fast it's moving. Um, as we know, cobalt is going to have a deficit by the 2000, and palladium will remain as a supply de deficit for the next um, seven years. One of the key, key factors in that is they've, in Europe especially, they're putting a lot more hybrids in than they had expected. They thought they would have the infrastructure and it's not there. So um, it's, it's causing a little bit of shortage. And as you know, Palladium has done very well. Um, it, it's one of the seventh rarest metals in the world and it's quite, it's quite interesting. And um, as you can see, there's a there's a um, a supply deficit uh, in in palladium, and it's it's shown in the market. I think it had a peak of about 1,600 over the last month or so, and then it's it's sort of leveled in this thing. It's the most erratic star, uh, commodity. You'd be up or down fifty dollars in a day. It's quite wow. That's that's a turn, but it seemed to get a little bit more stable. Now this is the this is the property we took on. It's called the East Bull um, property, and it's just outside of um, Sudbury, 90 kilometers. A friend of mine by the name of Richard Sutcliffe came to me and said, "Listen, I got a property for you. I think you should look at the Plenty Market." I said, "Oh, I don't know." And I started looking at it, and I took a little bit too long to sort of make the deal with him. And he said, "If you don't do this, I'm going to North American Palladium." And he just was right to sign it. And I said, "Well, come with me. I think we can make more money together because I'll give you a lot more stock than they will." And he said, "Okay, I'm going to do that." And he's going to join us here in the next week on the, as an advisor. And he put the property together. 
it's a you know it's got a, it's, it's it's a road there that it's it's quite good. It's got everything in it. It's got uh, you know you got power lines and you got rail lines and you got uh, roads accessible out of Sudbury. We got all the uh, infrastructure there that we need. So now we have a uh, we have a uh, 43101 that gives us uh, 523,000 ounces and um, it's got a grade of 1.46, which is a pretty good grade. We um, are going to um, go ahead and uh, drill this, uh, this structure. Um, it's got an 1800 foot or 1800 meters strike length, and it goes to the depth of about 120 meters. Um, it's mineralized, has, it mineralized zone has 3600 strike length, and you can read that, and potential of four times the, the current resources by going to um, 240 meters in depth. It's, again, there's the, uh, again, the infrastructure and all the stuff where we are. And then I'm going to change from there and go to a project that I, when we sold first co uh, U.S. Cobalt, I bought this project and it was in, on the German-Czech border. And this was very unique to me. It was an interesting project. And it had never been, it had been mined in the thir about 1300s. And then it carried on until they put a head frame on it in, in um, 1898. And just after that, they had the austrian uh, Hungarian Empire with that war, and that got taken down. And it got lost in the First World War, and it got lost. And then it got to um, in the Second World War, it got lost. And then in about 1955, they put a head frame on it, and they um, I think I can go ahead here. They put a head frame on, and the um, Czech state communist party did 500,000 tons, and it took them 20 years to do it, and they just sort of created employment. And no one had ever done any really scientific work on it. Um, I'll back that up just a minute. So we went in and we spent a considerable amount of money and time with a gentleman by the name of Paul McGuigan, who I'd known for many, many years. And um, he's a VMS specialist. And we went in and we really remapped it and put it all together. And I'm going to back up here. This is 1,500 hectares. It's a big, big piece of ground. And it had a lot of different... Uh, uh, showings and pieces on it. Here is the project we worked on just in that little area there. And that's where the, the first um, miners went in and started mining. Now, it's, it's a very interesting project. It's very unique. And we are in the middle of the uh, car manufacturing in Germany. So we're 140 clicks away from the big um, Chinese BMW uh, plant that's going in there, and all the other manufacturers around. So it's very, very uh, it's kind, of, kind of fun. It's, it, it's got a lot of things I like, because when we started, I was one of the guys that started Rainy River. And when we, we started it, and when we went to, to sell it, or we got to go to our production, we, were, we had one First Nations band, and we settled with 13 at the end. And, and, and I, I like that, because they, we didn't have any First Nations here. And the, and the royalty on this is 4% of net. So, and very, very mining friendly. And I never thought, you know, Europe, you always, I never had that kind of imagination. It would be so easy to work in there. So that gives us um, um, a little bit of a summary on the, 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 what we've done. And then we have our, um, uh, we got 65 million shares outstanding. We have some warrants. We've just raised $2.8 million. I like the symbol bull. I would like to say that I was creative, but when I saw East Bull Palladium, I was told this. I said, "Why don't we ask for the symbol bull?" And it came up. So that was really good. So that, we do, we get called the bull all the time. Now I got the call the other day. The stock was down, and the guy called me up and said, "I want to tell you about this bull shit you have." So I had to talk to him a little bit. So, and that's pretty much we are. We're we're pretty excited about. It. We got two really hot projects. We got money to drill them. We're going to start drilling the. Uh, um, Palladium project here in the next week or so, and uh, we'll be drilling the, um, the uh, Czech-German properties uh, right after the summer because there's a lot of summer tourists, and we just want to stay out of the way of them for the moment. So there you are. That's it. Is there any questions? And I got that under 18 minutes, by the way. Good? All right. Thank you.
think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bit. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?